Hello everyone, this is the IFC Architects, and today we're going to be doing the Bonsai step-by-step -step tutorial project for beginners. We're just going to get straight into it. I'd really recommend that you turn on all of your snaps. These ones are the ones that I've chosen. Make sure that this little icon is blue and that these ones are selected. To select them, you just select it and you press shift to select all the ones you want. And then I would also really recommend that you turn on your move gizmo. That way, when you select an object, you just get these little gizmos that allow you to adjust the object in real time. All right. And then the last thing is just here in the viewport shading, I would recommend putting on your shadow and your cavity if your PC allows. And then in cavity, I'd recommend both and then cranking all these to the max. It just really helps with visibility in 2D. Okay. If you want to know how to install Blender or Bonsai as the add-on, the videos will be in the description or you can check out the IFC Architect channel. All right, let's get to it. First, I'm going to start by creating a project. The one thing you need to make sure is that you have your IFC4 demo template selected here. It is selected by default, so technically you shouldn't have to change anything. I'm going to be using IFC4, which is what I recommend. I'm going to be using metric and millimeters. You can change it to imperial. That's okay. I'm going to use square and cube meters, and then we have our IFC4 demo template. If you do not select this, if this is not here, you will have no walls, windows, etc. All right, so we're going to click create project. We know it's been created because we have type products here available. If we zoom in, we can see there's a door, a window, and a bunny. I'm just going to hide those again, and they've been loaded into my outliner here on the left-hand side. I'm going to press N on my toolbar, and I'm going to activate my screencast keys. Everything that I'm doing is going to be highlighted here in the left-hand corner if you want to follow along. And then I'm just going to select my wall tool. I'm going to press 7 on my keyboard, and then I'm going to start by drawing out my wall. So if I want to add a wall, I can click on this little button here, Add, and I want to make sure I've selected a wall. So I'm just going to click on that little waffle grid and I'm going to select the 200 wall here. Make sure it says active and make sure we have an icon preview here. I'm going to say close. I've got my wall tool selected. I have my wall type selected that I want to do, the 200 wall. And then we're going to say add or shift A is the hotkey. I'm going to click on the origin there. I'm going to drag it to the right and I'm typing a value to give my wall a length. So I can either just click randomly. It adjusts in increments of about 500 millimeters or I'm going to type in the value I want, which is going to be 4250. So 4.25 meters, and then I'm going to drag my polyline up, and I'm going to type in 3500. Then I'm going to press X, and I'm just going to snap it to the beginning here, and then I'm going to press Shift and C, and then press Enter. And there you can see we have four walls created here. Then I want to add a few more walls. I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to click on this corner, drag it out. I'm going to make it 1500, and then I'm going to drag it down, press Y, and snap it to the edge over here and then press enter. All right, so now we have one, two, three, four walls, five, six walls here, and we wanna do our internal walls as well. I'm gonna go back into plan view, which has the Y direction in the north-south axis and the X direction in the east-west axis. I'm gonna select my wall tool again. I'm gonna click on the waffle grid. I'm gonna select my wall 100. And then from here, I'm gonna press shift A, and I'm gonna click just here on the inside and bring it out, and I'm gonna make it one, 100. And then I'm going to drag it down, doesn't matter the value, and press enter. I'm going to select both of these and say GX and just line it up against the wall there. And then I'll say GB and then say Y to line it up there and say GY minus 1, 100, essentially. Then I'm going to select this one, select that one and say Shift E, and that would extend the wall to that other one. All right. So now we have our external walls, we've got our internal walls, and we want to add in our doors and windows. I'm going to select our door tool now. I'm going to click on our little waffle grid here, make sure that our door is loaded, our icon, and make sure I've selected the door itself. Then I'm just going to say Shift A, and I'm going to snap it there, and then I'm going to snap it there. So now we have two doors. I'm going to press Escape to get out of that. I'm going to click, hold and click on my door tool, and then select the window tool. I'm going to load my waffle grid here, make sure I have my window selected, and then I'm just going to say Shift A to place it there and over here. And then I'm just going to select my wall here and I'm going to give it a height of 1, 200 and refresh that. And I'm going to take this wall and extend it to the end and take this wall and extend it there. All righty. Next thing we're going to do is our spaces. We're just going to select our walls in our scene and then we're going to go select the spatial tool here and I'm going to click on Shift A or just generate spaces from wall button there and you can see it automatically generates two spaces. I'm going to select the bigger one. And I'm going to go here to Object Information, where it says Attributes. I'm going to rename this from Space Zero to Office. And then I'm going to say Save Attributes. And then I'm just going to select the other space. 
in the same place, attributes, I'm going to rename it to bathroom. And we're going to say save attributes. From here, I'm just going to click on toggle hide spaces. That'll hide the spaces for me. And I'm going to draw in our slabs and our roof. So I'm going to go to my slab tool. I'm going to load my waffle grid so that we have our icons. I'm going to select the 200 floor slab. I'm going to say close. Then I'm going to select just my external walls here. And I can press add or I can say shift A, shift A. And you can see it generates a slab at the bottom there. I'm going to take the slab and also these two walls here. And I'm going to say G. Z and we're going to move them down by 200 so minus 200 millimeters and press enter righty and then from here I'm actually going to adjust my walls as well I'm going to select these three back walls and I'm going to give them a height of 3500 and refresh to get that there I'm going to select this wall and press shift E so it butts I'm going to select this wall and then this wall and say shift T so it, it butts out and this wall and that wall and say shift T so it butts out against that edge and now we're going to add in our roof slab. So we want to create a new slab. I'm going to click on the launch type manager. I'm going to click on this little icon and I'm going to say duplicate type. I'm going to make sure that I've got my floor 200 copy. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to say rename so that it says roof 50. I'm going to say, okay, make sure I've got my roofs 50 selected as the active type. Click close. I'm going to go up to my plan view seven. I'm going to say shift a, and I'm going to start in this corner and then I'm going to snap to that corner. I'm going to come out to the edge and then I'm going to go have an overhang of about 300. And then we're just going to press X to snap it to this edge here. And then we're just going to say shift C and press enter. All right. So the few things we need to adjust. The first one is I'm going to move this to the top. I'm going to say GZ. Then I'm going to select the roof and I'm going to say, I want this to have a five degree slope. Then I want to actually adjust the thickness. So we need to make sure we're using the correct type. If I go to types here, I can see it's the roof 50. And then if I go to geometry and materials, I can go to object materials here. I can click on this little pencil icon to edit it. And then I click on this other pencil icon further down and change the layer thickness to 50. Afterwards, I need to click save changes and then save at the top there as well. Right. From here, we're going to go move on to the beams. So we're going to click on the column tool and we're going to select the beam there. We're going to make sure it's loaded with the WAF grid and we're going to select beam two, which is the C channel. We're going to close that. I'm going to say shift A. I'm going to click on this point here. There. Click on that point. Click on that point. Press enter. Okay. <laughs> select the beam, press GZ. Line it up with the bottom there, and then GX, GX to line it up with the edge there. And I'm going to line it up with the end. So GZ, GZ. And then from here, we're just going to say edit axes. So we're going to grab this point and say GZ, and we're going to line these up with the angle of the roof. So press tab, and you can see it's lined up, but it uh, hasn't really. Edit axes. Make sure that things are lined up. So GX, GZ, Z. There we go. I'm just going to say GZ, GZ, GX, GX. Okay. So it's lined up. Then we need to select the beam. We'll go to parametric geometry. We'll go to array. We'll click add array. We can click on the pencil icon to edit that. And then in the X direction, we're going to say 1, 200, 1 1.2 meters, and there's going to be four beams. So we've created four beams there. Now we're going to create a aft up roof over the entrance. We're going to make sure we're still in the beam tool. We're going to select beam one, make sure that's our active tool. We're going to say shift A. We're going to click here. And in the Y direction, we're going to make it 1, 400, 1 1.4 meters. And then in the X direction, we're going to make it 1, 400. And we're going to press enter, select both of the beams and say GZ to bring it all the way to the top and then GX to snap it against the wall there. And then from here, we just need to add in a slab. So we're going to use the floor 200. That's totally fine. I'm just going to say shift A and I'm going to do this in the plan view, press seven, say shift A, snap there. 
press X, snap there, press Y, press X again, snap there, and say Shift C and press Enter. And then we're just going to say GZ to bring it up to the top there. And we're going to make the slope zero. Alrighty. Then we're going to add in a column. We select the beam tool and we go over to the column tool. We load the grid there. We're going to select C3, which is a rectangular section. And then we're just going to say Shift A, snap it there. We're going to say GZ, say GY to line it up with the edge of the, and GX to line up with the edge there, GZ, and then Shift E to get it to the bottom of the, of the beam there. Okay, and then the last thing we want to do is add in a ramp. So we're going to select the normal selection box. We're going to place our 3D cursor where we want to add in the blender object. We're going to say Shift A, Mesh Plane. We're going to press Tab to go into that. Press 2 to select edges, select this one, GX, GX, GY. Then we're going to adjust this so that it lines up at the edge of the door. And then we're going to bring it up so it is level with the door. And then we're going to say E and then Y just to get it across over there so we have a landing. Then I'm going to press Tab when I'm done. I'm going to go to Object Information. I'm going to choose an IFC element. I'm going to choose an IFC ramp and the rest is okay, we're just going to say assign IFC class. Okay, and that is your basic modeling. From here, we'll move on to drawing. And just remember to save <laughs> as you go along. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope that was helpful. Just a heads up, I have a coffee page if you would like to support the creation of these videos. Coffee supporters get videos a week earlier, and they help really create the content. And thank you to my coffee supporters. Awesome, thank you everyone, bye.